from one to the next. Are you good with the external, or do you want me to do external too? Just do everything. <laughs> everything, okay. Just because it's going to be a little bit harder to get some of these, but we'll get what we can. All right. So the uh, are you ready? Okay. So the first thing we'll do is to look for the anus, which is going to be exactly where you'd expect it to be, underneath the tail. The next thing on your list is the umbilical cord. Your umbilical cord, of course, is going to extend where the belly button of the pig would be. Um, the urogenital opening for the female, you're going to find it right back here by the urogenital papilla. This is your urogenital papilla. If this were a male, you wouldn't see the cone-shaped projection. Instead, you'd see the scrotal sac back here, and the urogenital opening would be in this region right up here. Uh, let's see here. Make sure you're comfortable with the different directions terms. Dorsal is the back region. So the pig is resting on its dorsal side with its ventral side facing us. Uh, anterior is towards the head region of the pig. Posterior is back towards the back of the pig. So make sure anterior, posterior. Make sure you can determine the sex of the pig just by looking at external structures. Again, your general papilla, you know that it's female. If we take a look at the oral cavity of the pig. There are four things you need to know. You need to know the hard palate, which is towards the front of the mouth, the soft palate, which is towards the back of the mouth, similar to what we find in humans. You need to know the tongue, and then you also need to know the epiglottis, which is this flap that's right at the very back of the throat. The purpose of that is to keep any food from getting down the windpipe. If we take a look at the neck region, this group had um, cut opens part of the neck region, but you can see what it, where it would be connected otherwise. So first we'll do the larynx. The larynx is the voice box. So this is going to be the larger unit that's up here. It's got a little bit of a harder structure to it. So this is equivalent to our voice box or an Adam's apple, so it extends out. From there we also have um, the larynx. So larynx, sorry, trachea is down here. The way you tell your trachea is that it has these rings that surround it and that's going to help to keep this nice and open. So this is held open even though there's no breathing, there's, you know, it's dead. If we go back behind this, we find the esophagus. Move this to the side here. Here's your esophagus. So as soon as you're able to find that trachea, right behind it is going to be your esophagus. So, same thing with humans. Our esophagus is a muscular tube. It's located back behind our trachea, and this trachea helps to protect it. So, we get this little bit of a tougher structure back in front of it. All right, make sure I'm hitting everything as we go. Thyroid gland is found right on top of your trachea. So, here's our thyroid gland. It had been pushed off to the side for the dissection, but it's right here. And then we can get into our completely destroyed on this one. You should be able to see your thymus gland normally up in this region, but it's been a little bit uh, obliterated by the dissection process. There's a little bit that's left up in here. The big thing that you're looking for with the thymus gland is that it comes up on either side and has kind of a mottled appearance to it. All right, then we go up into our thoracic cavity here. Your thoracic cavity is everything that's up above the diaphragm here. So what we're looking at is going to be our heart. With the heart, you're going to see the right side, the left side of the heart. Right ventricle, left ventricle, right atrium, left atrium. So those are our major parts of the heart. We've got a right lung and a left lung. So these are the parts that you're finding in the thoracic cavity. And then also the diaphragm, which is this really thin muscle that separates your thoracic cavity from your abdominal cavity. Moving down the list, we then have the liver. Liver is going to be the first thing that you notice in the abdominal cavity. If you flip up the liver and look at the underside, you'll find your gallbladder. There's a little beat up in here, but it's the bag-shaped structure that you find underneath the liver. So this is it right here. From there, we'll look at the spleen. The key for finding the spleen is to find your stomach. This is the stomach. It's the bag-like structure, and the spleen kind of comes up and wraps around the stomach. It looks like a flatworm or a leech. It's just this really flat structure that comes up and around the stomach. Here from the stomach, we can also follow it in the other direction, and we can find that we have a pyloric sphincter right here. It's very tough 
in material, a lot of muscle in there, and then directly after that is the first part of the small intestine. This is the duodenum. The duodenum is that very first part extending from the stomach. If we lift the stomach up in this direction, we will find underneath it the pancreas. The pancreas is this structure right here, and as opposed to a lot of our other organs, this is actually going to look a lot more like a gland, because the pancreas is a gland, where it has that weird mottled appearance to it. So your pancreas, if you find your stomach, you lift it up, you'll always find it right underneath it. From there, we'll go from to our small intestine, which fills up a good majority of the abdominal cavity. So all of this is small intestine, and then all of this over here condensed is going to be our large intestine. This is different than what you find in humans. In humans, you've got your small intestine that's framed in by your large intestine. So you have your ascending, your transverse, your descending, and then your sigmoid. So we've got differences with that. Um, something on our large intestine to be able to find is to make sure you can find the cecum. The cecum is always going to be the dead end area of the large intestine. So if you see this, it doesn't go anywhere. Your small intestine attaches up in here, and you have this little dead end portion. That's going to be your cecum. The colon is your, another name for your large intestine. The anus, again, is going to be found back here. So we have our rectum that's going to lead and allow waste to exit through the anus. The kidneys are found along the back of the pig. Some of them still have membranes on it, like these. <laughs> these are the kidneys on this side, and then another kidney over on this side. Um, the parts of the kidney, we'll cover that with the excretory system. Our other parts are going to be the urinary bladder, which you, if you find your umbilical cord, it's right this middle portion that's found on the umbilical cord is your bladder. And the, your readers, they did not uncover for me. <laughs> We're getting to them. <laughs> it's okay. There I have a half an hour recording. Oh, okay, good. So from the kidneys, you've got these tubes that leave the kidneys and will head up to the bladder, and these are the ureters. So ureters are going to carry urine from here all the way into the bladder. So they look like little white tubes that kind of have this, um, you know, convoluted curving to them. So that covers all of our external oral cavity, neck region, thorax, and abdomen. We still have veins and arteries to go through. Your best way to do this is to actually couple them up. So you want to be able to get 